Okay, the thoughts that are flowing away right now is um, about the leaven. Bible. Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And um, I wanted to get deep on that one, actually. It felt really good to get deep on that and start to paint a picture of a lot of the nutrients of the Pharisees' heart. And the leaven represents... Um, an indication that the heart is wrong before God. It's not a pure heart before God. It looks right to man because we see with our eyes and with our with our spirits. I think we can tell that something is definitely wrong when you get around some people. Just some, there's an indication that something just doesn't seem right, and eventually you'll find out that the, that, that it's true. Either the leaven be removed or the leaven grow and show its true colors. The leaven will eventually show its true colors or it will be removed. There's no other way around it. You know, even if you have to wait until the day of judgment, you know, eventually the leaven will be um, exposed or removed. It will be expelled or exposed. Exposed or expelled. And um, the one that I was trying to really nail on, the uh, nutrient, praise the Lord, of the leaven, one of the nutrients of the leaven is just like what? The rationale of man. The rationale of a man when he says at one point I put away childish thinking thinking the rationale the way you filter things through your mind was childish meaning bad and immature now I think like a man now my rationale is being pure like he says take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ the thinking must be in submission to the holiness of God it must be in submission to the nowness of Christ. Lest ye become a heart and a thought process that matches a nutrient of the leaven. The Bible warns us, and I think it's the book of Colossians, and it's talking about beware another one is another one, is a warning about someone destroying your faith with philosophy philosophy is an outlook, it's a, it's a world perspective, it's a perspective it's a, it's a rationale, it's a thought process, it's a stronghold if you will, a stronghold can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing, okay, stronghold means um, um, something that is definite, okay? So you can have a definite mindset that is a stronghold against you, or you can call on the Lord who is set in stone, who is rock, hold on to Him, and He can be your stronghold. So a stronghold can be good, Christ the Lord Jesus, amen, or it can be a bad thing. It's a stronghold on you. You don't have a hold on Christ. There's a stronghold that is a bad philosophy. It is a bad nutrient um, uh, of the Pharisee mind that is against you. Because it's, it's messing up your, 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 your um, pure mind with God. The Bible says to renew your mind daily. Because our mind naturally wants to run to the leaven. Our mind wants to run to the leaven One pastor says, I think I don't know who said this, but I've heard it passed around a bunch, that your that your uh, your mind doesn't stay new just like your hair doesn't stay combed. It naturally gets messy. And so we bring in the word of God, we bring in the sobering kingdom word for the day to renew our minds lest we have a philosophy or a nutrient of the leaven or some kind of a thought process it is a thinking pattern that doesn't match the man. It matches a childish, swinish, selfish, immature. 
We don't want to slide back into that. We want to keep on being mature. And so we have to bring sobriety, you know. The goodness of God leads to repentance and, and throwing away the childish ways. And the goodness of God leads to repentance and helps us to stay mature and keeps our mind new. And the knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men as well. So there's nice sounding things that can keep us sober and there's very strong, very terrifying things that can make us stay sober. It doesn't matter if it's nice or sounds scary. It matters if it's true. It matters if it's in the spirit. The truth of the Lord and His Spirit combined is the kingdom of God for us today. The word without the Spirit is a boring thing, is a very dead thing, and it doesn't have a lot of power, okay? When the power of God is activated is when it becomes alive, okay? It needs to have both, okay? And I know the Bible says that the word will not return void. That's when God speaks it. And what He sets out to come to pass will it be sure to come. But my point is that he, his word alone must be understood for it to have power. There's people who rattle off scripture all the time and it has no effect at all. It does return void because the person who's doing it is not submitted to the Spirit of God. Is not submitted to the Father. And the power is very lacking. And people are not cracking their chains out. They're not getting free from the leaven. They're staying in the leaven. Even if they're on their way to heaven, they're still getting stuck in the leaven. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Because a little bit of leaven jacks up everything. Alright? If you mess up on a foundational point of truth, all of your perspective is going to be wrong on everything. You're going to have a messed up perspective. You're going to have a leaven perspective on everything if you can't get the foundations right. So I believe when he says beware of the leaven, he's talking about very foundational things of the heart. Very foundational things of the kingdom of God. Very foundational things of doctrine. They must not change. They can't change. If they change, you're going from the man to the childish immature. You're letting the philosophy of the devil, doctrines of devils, bring you back down to a, a cloudy, muck and mire perspective. We don't want to go backwards. We want to stay sober and avoid the leaven. A nutrient of a philosophy or a mindset or a thought process, a thinking pattern that is not of God. Here's where it gets complicated now. There's things you can say that are true that are so wrong because it's not time for it. That's why it's important that it's spirit-led. Same reason you can read the Bible and have it be completely dead, and it can be, is because there has to be a momentum spiritually in it for people to really catch the Word of God and have it to be effective on people's lives. Otherwise, it's just people hearing stuff, and it might as well just be you talking about how to build a, a, a picnic table or something. Totally unprofitable. Totally unprofitable. And the Word of God can be talked about and preached from some perspective with no power of the Holy Spirit, and it's unprofitable. The combination must be that way. That's the kingdom of God. The Word of God is living right when He speaks it through the preaching of His Word. God can speak through the preaching of His Word. When that, when that preacher is submitted and he's willing to let the Lord do His work and not get in the way with his pride because God resists that. So if you've got a proud preacher, it's leaven. Beware of the leaven. So beware, beware of pride. When we're listening to people and when we're listening to ourselves talk. Amen.